Hey, how's it going, buds? I'm Arthur Eby, and I'm in Kansas right now, the land of many grasses, where I'm trying to think of a way to make fuel from grass clippings. Now, I've done some calculations, and I've got some numbers I think you'll like. There are 7 million kilometers squared of grasses grown for agriculture, 10,000 kilometers squared worth of golf courses in the world, and based on an estimate that I did with 750 million rural homes in the world, there are approximately 174,000 kilometers squared of grass in people's yards. Now, it's not easy to say how many grass clippings all of that area will give. Different grasses will grow at different rates, different parts of the world will make grasses grow differently, so on and so forth. I calculated the maximum that it possibly could be based on the fact that there are 120,000 terawatts of energy coming from the sun. Now, maintained grass on Earth is just 0.05% of the total area of Earth, and when the grass absorbs any amount of energy from the sun, it probably only absorbs about 10% of it. With those numbers, I calculated that the maximum that grass clippings can possibly have is 170 terawatts. Now, the grass won't grow in the winter, and a lot of the grass clippings are fed to cows and horses. So the amount of power coming from grass clippings is going to be a lot smaller than this number. But I calculated, based off global energy estimates, the human race in its entirety is using only 20 terawatts worth of power. In theory, we should be able to fuel our entire planet just from grass clippings. So what are some of the ways that we can get fuel from grass clippings? Well, to start with, power plants. Incinerators will take in anything you give them. Trash, coal, grass clippings, you name it. We'll turn it into energy. Secondly, wood-powered cars. Eust Konin took a two-month trip around Europe with just a saw, an axe, and a wood-powered car. Thirdly, ethanol. We are currently making about 26 billion gallons of ethanol from grass clippings every year. And that's great. We get about 80,000 kilojoules worth of energy for every gallon of ethanol, but it takes about 72,000 kilojoules to make a gallon of ethanol. The return on energy for it is very low. In fact, if you look at a graph of all the ways we produce energy, hydroelectric and coal are at the top, with ethanol very close to the bottom. We could, in theory, make a biodiesel out of grass. We could make almost any molecule from any other molecule, but biodiesel is even worse. If biodiesel and ethanol are ever to become viable fuel sources, we are going to have to find an easier way to get them, but it doesn't seem like there are any easier ways to get them at the moment. Best thing to do is just take a hike and see what we can get. But hiking. Have you ever seen that glossy, iridescent material when you go way out into the wilderness and see that pond scum? What is that? It looks like gasoline or some kind of diesel fuel. We know those little microbes are producing methane at the bottom of lakes and ponds. In fact, there are 5,000 gigatons of methane in the bottom of the oceans. It's frozen in ice that you can light on fire. If some microbes are producing methane, is it possible that some microbes could be producing ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptane, or octane? If they are, that would be the kind of fuel source we need. So let's go on a hike and see if we can actually get some of these microbes and see what's in that pond scum. That's silly slippery. Here it is. Look at that iridescent, shiny stuff floating on the water. What is that pond scum on top? Let's see if it's flammable. Okay. It does not appear to be flammable, but it is pretty cold out here, and we are at about 10,000 feet elevation here, so I wouldn't be surprised if that didn't burn. I'm gonna have to take some of this as a sample and see how much we can get. Ah, that is pretty beautiful. I'm also gonna grab some of that decaying organic matter. Whatever bacterial, fungal, or protozoan species are contained in this sludge is 
what's producing the hydrocarbons. All right, I've added some grass clippings and some pond sludge to these containers. Hopefully they eat the grass clippings and produce some sort of hydrocarbon or oily substance that can be used as a fuel source. It would require no human energy and it would be a good way to dispose of grass clippings. It is strange though that they produce ultra high energy waste products. They should be producing low energy waste products if they ever want to get enough energy out of it. Eight molecules of methane should have the same amount of energy as one molecule of octane, right? But actually, eight molecules of methane has twice the amount of energy as one molecule of octane. They have to go through extremely high energy processes just to live. The dispersion of methane gas may play a role in entropy, which may help them in another way. But we'll see what happens. Anyways, thanks for coming on this adventure with me, Puds. I'll talk to you soon. Bye for now.